awesome thing of the week is, uh, and, and, and Chilla, I'd like to get your kind of thoughts on some of these, since you know a little bit more about uh, iPhone development. Um, you know, the biggest thing missing, you know, uh, Android people can get their emulators and everything to play their Nintendo games, arcade games, Game Boy, uh, whatever, whatever they like. Uh, and you haven't been able to do that really with iPhones, iOS, uh, unless you jailbreak it. Uh, so there was one article I saw out here, and there's another way you can do this with a little bit of a trick. Um, but this one alleges to, from Touch Arcade, uh, tells us uh, how to play NES games on your iPhone without jailbreaking via Web NES. If you just do a search for Web NES, this is easy to find. Just uh, you can find this Touch Arcade article if you want to see how it how it works out. Uh, you just go to this site, and, and it's basically a web app, and uh, you you can install it. So it looks like an app. You see web, uh, the red one there at the bottom if you're on video. And it opens up. And the cool thing is, so you're like, how do I get you know, my ROMs into this? My legally acquired ROMs. I completely own Mega Man 2 that I tried to load here. Uh, but they do have some kind of open source ones already loaded. You're not going to see that on the screen. Um, but you can connect it directly to your Dropbox. So all you have to do is put your ROMs in the Dropbox, and it'll connect to that. Um, and now let me let me try it again. I, I restarted it because I was having actually issues loading it. Is this the GBA for iOS? That's the other one I went. Oh, sorry, about. And, I apologize. And actually, since I've started using this, I actually can't. Like, I get into Dropbox in a web interface. I select my thing, and the choose button doesn't work for some reason. So I'm trying to figure that part out. Um, but it it did work one time. Uh, sound doesn't work unless you use headphones. So it's still kind of. You know, a little, a little buggy, but you know, I, I, you got to think. You know, uh, eventually, this is going to be, uh, you know, get get even better as emulators usually do. Now, the one you found, and I saw something else like this, but it was like multiple emulators. You roll your clock back on your phone because apparently there's something with an update, um, and I think this hmm. one's done the same way that this GBA um, emulator. It's another web app. You, you roll it back, you install it. Now, the one I saw before, you went to a website, and you can install several different emulators. And I still had the thing on here um, today. Uh, but you would get this little spot for an app. And it's all these cross hatches, which looks like it might be like the kind of placeholder. I didn't put art here yet for my app kind mm -hmm. of graphic. Um, but you would go to the site, and you would download in that place one of your emulators. And again, I think that attached the Dropbox and everything, and you could bring them down. How are they doing this? So the, the web nest looks like it's some kind of online HTML. Well, I mean, think about it. HTML5 has gotten a lot better with that graphic capabilities, etc. Um, the the thing that gets sticky with the whole Apple device and, and, and the whole jailbreaking for an emulator is that Apple, in their terms and services agreement, for developers says they're not allowed to put an emulator in the app store. I'm guessing that's some kind of HTML5 interface. Yeah, that I'm then... not going through the app store <clears throat> now. I, I just right. go to a page. It's a I, website. I, I'm in Safari, and and you save it just like like Forecast.io pops up as like a full app instead of like in a browser, but it really is just running Safari, mm -hmm. right? I think like if you look at like um, is it that unta un is it untapped the beer. Mm -hmm. check-in thing mm -hmm. that whole app is all back-ended which is how they can quickly roll out updates for windows phone ios android etc it's pretty much a shell on the device that then contacts a back-end html5 system i'm guessing someone figured out a way and think about html5 and java you could probably load some kind of jar in there i'm sure someone has a java Thing for for emulating some of the basic systems like Nintendo and Game Boy. Um, I mean, I have I have I've played a lot of emulators and have emulated on a lot of different hardware. I think us not seeing it publicly available for the iPhone is due to the restriction that Apple has. Mm -hmm. But I'm guessing as browser and 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 that technology everything becoming browser based i mean look at look at what google has done with google docs and they they showed it could be done mm -hmm. apple has now put and made it actually look really really nice and mm -hmm. it started to enable a lot of the things that 
Google did, but with the Apple Flare. And you imagine, because like, I mean, HPL5 can get very impressive. If you look at some of the Chrome experiments, um, when we were, when I, I taught an animation class last year and we got into uh, when the uh, new Oz movie came out, like there's some pretty deep multimedia stuff you can do with it. If they start porting that over to be able to run in the, in the phone browser, it's going to be amazing. Have you ever played with um, Director? Macro Macromedia. Director. I had three quarters in Macromedia Director. <laughs> so, so you know, Director with a timeline and everything yes, like that, and yes. creating everything to be interactive. Yes, Fl the, I mean, and Flash is similar. Flash is similar. So Flash was like, okay, let's take Director and web enable it. Yeah. So this company, and there it's and for this uh, Director was, when when you could do web with Director. It wasn't terribly optimized. That's what, if you remember, Shockwave has a plugin about ten years ago. That that's what you would develop that in. And actually, when you sometimes when you look at Flash plugins, it's also labeled as Shockwave. Um, they were kind of sister technologies, I'd say. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, 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 because they they had a timeline, but it was just the way. Um, but they were they were kind of different thinking of doing the same thing. I'm trying to. I can't remember what director's language was. They called it something. And they had their own like little language. I think it was action script. Just something like, like that. it was a version of action script, just like Flash has. So there, there's a company called Tumult, T U M U L T dot com. Um, they've taken the concept of director and Flash, and they've actually built something that at a glance reminded me of director. And it, but it assembles um, HTML5. So you have the timeline with interactive and keyframes, and you can tween. But it's all HTML5 based. Mm. <laughs> don't worry about it. So, so it, I don't know. I think you're going to get to the point where HTML5 visual or WYSIWYG browse or WYSIWYG editors are going to get to the point where everybody can easily use them and all the toolkits going to be there for you to expose. Mm -hmm. And you're going to, they're going to take everything that you think of, Oh, I need an app for that. And sooner or later, it's going to be, and that's probably, I've, I've had some like discussions about this with, uh, actually with, with Josh Sager, who's an insane coder. Um, and there are tools and, and I got, I have the, uh, the, plan with adobe that you can get all the tools and and they do have like html5 coding stuff but a lot of it because my, my big thing was like well so how are people doing this how are people putting these things together because there wasn't anything that made sense in my mind when we did the animation class we're like this is how you take css and make an object move in code mm -hmm. so versus flash when you get into flash i don't you know look up a flash interface there's tutorial videos on youtube but you get a you get a whizzy wig not a whizzy wig but you get a, a gui you know mm -hmm. you get a timeline just like if you're in final cut or iMovie, you got a little timeline that you're working with right and, and there's more to it of course um but when you get an html5 i think for the most part you're getting into the code like you were saying w what made you say i take this point and i take this point and do what's called tweening to make it move from this to this it would mm -hmm. just fill in the blanks of those frames from this position to this position um you're sitting there and saying okay this is this coordinate on the screen x y z access sometimes because you can do 3d animation coding and, and it gets pretty nutty um unfortunately um last thing i knew with those you know discussing with people i knew about the tools um those adobe tools spit out some pretty garbage code Mm -hmm. It's not very efficient at all. And thinking back to how Dreamweaver handed HTML, I'm not surprised because you would always get just horrible, horrible junk code uh, when you spit out a page uh, that was that was coded in Dreamweaver using their WYSIWYG. So, but, I mean, that's always it's always a problem. Yeah, I mean, you, it's it's you can either develop it really, really quick. Yeah. Or you can sit there and write a code line by line. Yeah. Or you can optimize. It. Yeah. So, so I I I think we're gonna get to the point where you're gonna see. I'm still not sold on HTML5 from a speed factor and obviously no internet connection, limited mm -hmm. a capability, whereas uh, and certain apps you can keep playing offline. And that's something I think Google's taken into consideration and, and you're going to see Google really push that whole offline web browsing HTML5 experience a lot further.